SpaceX has already landed nearly 500 rockets back on Earth. But what happens when there's no launch tower, no flat landing pad, and no recovery crew? Welcome to the wild terrain of the Moon and Mars. How do you land the world's most ambitious spacecraft, Starship? On alien worlds, where failure means the mission ends before it even begins. From Falcon 9's reliable telescoping legs to futuristic electric-powered shock absorbers, SpaceX is rethinking everything about landing gear. Because when you're building a civilization on Mars, every detail counts. Stick around, because in today's Tech Map episode, we're diving deep into the brilliant, bizarre, and bold design of Starship's landing legs, and why they may just hold the key to humanity's next giant leap. SpaceX has pulled off nearly 500 rocket landings, yet they're pushing boundaries even further by trying something totally new, catching the Starship rocket in mid-air. Why? Because they're laser-focused on simplifying rocket manufacturing and getting rid of any unnecessary weight. The goal is crystal clear. Make rockets as light, affordable, and rapidly reusable as airplanes. But don't count traditional landing legs out just yet. In harsh, unpredictable places like the Moon or Mars, building massive infrastructure like Earth's Mechazilla Tower isn't exactly a walk in the park. That's where landing legs really prove their worth, at least in the early stages of space exploration. That's why the Starship's lunar version has those strange-looking legs, sparking curiosity. And one big question, how are these landing legs actually built? Well, they borrow a few from the Falcon 9's design. The Falcon 9, SpaceX's workhorse rocket, has four specially engineered landing legs. They're built using super strong yet lightweight materials like carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb. During flight, these legs are tucked in tight against the rocket and only deployed just before landing. They use a combo of gravity, they simply fall into place, and air-powered actuators filled with high-pressure helium gas to open. Each leg weighs in at about 500 kilograms. That's around the weight of five to six adult humans. So together, all four legs add up to nearly 2,000 kilograms. These legs allow the Falcon 9 to land with pinpoint accuracy on dedicated pads or ocean-based platforms. Their main job is to stabilize the rocket's first stage so it can be recovered and reused for more missions. They work like telescopes, sliding out and locking in place. But here's the catch. Once the rocket lands, the legs don't fold back automatically. Instead, cranes and other ground equipment are needed to fold them back in, which adds a bit of complexity to the recovery process. And yes, these legs are designed strictly for Earth, not for the Moon or Mars. Now, fast forward to Starship we'll likely see a repeat of the Falcon 9's use of lightweight materials to conserve mass. Starship's legs are designed to absorb the shock of landing and keep the rocket stable. Like Falcon 9, they might use a telescopic mechanism, tucked in during flight and extended for landing. That's one similarity. But there are key differences too. Starship is massive, built for deep space missions and reusability. So instead of four legs, it's getting six, bigger and longer. This isn't just to support its heavier weight. It's a smart move to lower the risk of total failure if one leg gets damaged. It's similar to how the Super Heavy booster uses a lot of Raptor engines. If one fails, the mission can still go on. It's all about redundancy, and Starship takes that concept to heart. For the operation in deep space, SpaceX hasn't revealed the exact details of how Starship's landing legs will extend and retract just yet. But one thing's pretty clear. We can likely rule out the pneumatic system, using high-pressure helium, that Falcon 9 relies on. That setup just isn't ideal for Starship. This spacecraft is heavier and needs a much tougher, more reliable mechanism to deploy and retract its legs, especially on the Moon or Mars. Plus, Space environments come with extreme temperature swings, which can mess with gas pressure and lead to unpredictable behavior. Sure, that can be addressed, but it complicates things a lot. Hydraulics were considered early on for Starship's legs, 
because they can handle heavy impacts and rough terrain, perfect for bumpy landings on lunar or Martian surfaces. But hydraulics aren't risk-free either. If a hydraulic line breaks in space, it could cause a failure. Fixable? Maybe. Easy? Definitely not. A promising alternative is electromechanical systems. These fit perfectly with SpaceX's push toward electrification, inspired by Tesla's electric vehicle tech. Electric motors are clean, reliable, and great at doing the same task over and over with precision. They also cut out the need for consumable gases, which makes the whole system more efficient. Here's how the deployment and retraction process might work on Starship during deep space missions. Before landing, the legs would extend, probably triggered automatically during descent. Hydraulic or electromechanical actuators would push the legs out, potentially using a multi-linkage design to create a wide, stable base, which is crucial for balance on uneven surfaces. Once deployed, the legs would lock in place to handle the landing forces. Now for the retraction. Unlike Falcon 9, which needs ground crews and cranes to fold the legs back in, Starship is expected to have self-retracting legs. That's a must for off-Earth missions, where there's no recovery crew waiting. The same actuators used for extension would likely be used in reverse to bring the legs back into compact storage, either in the skirt or fuselage pods. If SpaceX goes with hydraulic or electromechanical systems, there are a few big factors they'll consider. Mass efficiency. SpaceX is obsessed with saving weight to maximize payload. So, the leg mechanisms must be super strong but still lightweight. Advanced materials like composites or titanium alloys could be key to getting this balance right. Strong, reliable, and light enough to not cut into payload space. Extraterrestrial adaptation. The legs must work in low gravity. 0.17 g on the moon, 0.38 g on Mars, and deal with rough, dusty terrain. Falcon 9's pneumatic legs weren't built for that, so Starship needs something more rugged and flexible. Reliability and redundancy. These systems need to be ultra-reliable, with backups in place in case something goes wrong. There's no help desk on the moon. If it fails, it's a problem. Integration with the rocket's structure. The legs will likely be tucked inside the fuselage or skirt to keep them aerodynamic during launch and re-entry, which means the actuator system must be compact and efficient. Lastly, while adding hydraulic components does increase complexity and cost, SpaceX's innovative tower catch system for super heavy boosters helps offset that by simplifying the recovery process on Earth. So, what do you think? Which system, hydraulic, electromechanical, or something else entirely, should Starship use for deep space missions? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, if you love this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more and let's keep exploring the cosmos together. The design for Starship's landing legs didn't come out of nowhere. It was actually explored and tested early on with SpaceX's prototype rockets. Test models like SN10 and SN15 were equipped with six small basic legs tucked inside the skirt of the rocket. These legs weren't built for long-term use. They simply dropped down using gravity and were meant to crumple on impact to help absorb the landing force. It was a quick and dirty solution for early suborbital testing, not a spin-off from Falcon 9's more refined system. At first, SpaceX considered using landing legs on the Super Heavy booster, too, similar to Falcon 9. But in December 2020, Elon Musk shared a major update. The booster would ditch legs entirely. Instead, they'd use a bold new strategy, a giant catch mechanism with robotic arms on the launch tower that would grab the booster using its grid fins. This dramatic change was aimed at cutting down on mass and speeding up reusability, possibly allowing launches within just an hour. Now, when it comes to the Starship spacecraft itself, the part meant to go to the moon or Mars, 
landing legs are still in the picture. That's because the tower catch method only works on Earth. But specific details about Starship's final leg design are still under wraps. Some early renders showed four pod-like structures near the base, which might be leg housings, but these haven't been confirmed as final designs. These legs will need to be much stronger and more adaptable than Falcon 9's, capable of handling unpredictable surfaces covered in regolith. Instead of pneumatic systems, hydraulic extension and retraction might be the go-to choice here. Landing site selection on Mars is another big deal. SpaceX has chosen a spot in the northern lowlands, northwest of Tharsis, called Arcadia Planitia. This area checks a lot of boxes for future missions. It shows signs of glaciation, like parallel grooves and ridges, which hint at possible underground ice. It's relatively smooth, featuring young lava flows and volcanic terrain from the Amazonian era, making it safer for landings. Even though this site was picked with care, there's no guarantee of a perfectly flat landing. Orbital maps can only spot features bigger than 2 meters, but previous Mars missions have shown that 1-meter boulders are pretty common. If one of Starship's legs hits a rock that size, the landing system would need to adjust in real time, or else one leg might end up carrying almost half the vehicle's weight. When mentioning post-landing stability, some people worry that Starship is just too tall to stay upright after touchdown. But that fear isn't entirely justified. Despite its towering height, Starship actually has a relatively low center of gravity, thanks to its engines and fuel tanks being packed near the bottom. Its 30-foot-wide base also helps give it solid footing. For environmental hurdles, Mars doesn't make things easy. Its thin atmosphere doesn't offer much drag, which makes slowing down before landing a major challenge. Then there's the terrain. Rocky, dusty, and full of surprises. Not to mention planet-wide dust storms and big swings in temperature that could mess with critical systems and hardware. Elon Musk has mentioned that SpaceX has about a 50-50 shot at launching its first mission to Mars as early as 2026. If Starship manages to make that historic journey, it won't stop there. SpaceX is ready to scale up in a big way. During the next prime launch window between 2028 and 2029, the company is aiming to send around 20 Starships to the Red Planet. Looking further ahead, Musk has floated the idea of sending up to 100 Starships to Mars between 2030 and 2031. And by 2033, that number could skyrocket to as many as 500 missions. As this massive campaign unfolds, SpaceX is expected to refine its techniques and make Mars travel more routine, efficient, and reliable with every step. This could involve building a dedicated landing pad on Mars and possibly even deploying a version of the Mechazilla launch tower to eliminate the need for traditional landing legs. These developments would make interplanetary travel more cost-effective. Though challenging, such advancements are within reach.